Greetings folks. Today I have uh, the latest little intelligent soldering iron from Secure, the SI012. Uh, latest in the line of these wonderful little DC soldering irons. Uh, look at this one. It uh, has a funky little see-through case. Comes in a nice carrying case like that and the unique thing about this fella is that it can handle the long, uh, are they the 001 tips and the T12 tips as well. So the two different sorts of tips uh, can be fitted into the SI012 soldering iron. What else do we get in the pack? We've got the uh, DC5525 cable. Uh, it can be operated on 3S to 6S uh, or from the PD3.0 uh, protocol power supply and we have a USB-C input there. Uh, so what else do we get? We get a little cleaning pad and stand. Very nice. We get some screws and some of these uh, little copper contacts. I'll explain about them in a minute. We get an Allen key and a little Phillips head screwdriver. A few stickers and instruction manual as well. Okay, so how can it handle both tips? They're going to end up with uh, sitting on the end there. They're going to end up connecting in two different spots and that is exactly what happens. Uh, you might be able to see through the casing there we have two copper contacts there. That's for the long tips. See they go through and contact there. The short tips only reach to here and what you do is you open up the case, either uninstall these copper contacts and reinstall them in the front position here. You see a couple of little places to screw them in there. Or we have the uh, extra ones here. Now if you're exclusively using the long tips, you wouldn't install the contacts at the front. Just leave the contacts at the back there. If you're exclusively using the short tips, uh, you can leave the long contacts there. Or you can swap them over up to the front there or use these extra contacts. Most of my tips are actually the short ones, so what I'm going to do is put the contacts in. And then we, what we need to do is loosen off these two screws here, and that's what this Allen key is for. So once you take those screws out, you can prise open the case and take that off. Undo the Phillips head screw there. And there's a little lug on the bottom. You'll see that sticking out there. That fits into there. So just a specific little hole for that. So it's a bit fiddly, but we'll manage. Screw that down tight. There we go. That's the correct way. Do the same with the other contact. There we go going well. So now once we've got the contacts in you can put the short tips in and you can see it makes contact with those front two uh, contacts there. All right so let's put it back together. Click back into place. Secure the screws again. If you want to change tips, to loosen these off. Now, you'd want to choose which one, which style you're going to use all the time. Uh, I'm going to use the short ones all the time, so I'll, I'll keep the front contacts in place there. Bingo, there we are, ready to go. All right, so we can plug it in. I have a 4S LiPo there. Plug the lipo in and see what we get on the screen. 
Now it is firmware upgradable, so uh, the final firmware may be a little bit different to this one, but uh, you can see on the screen we've got the current temperature. It is quite hot here. Uh, it probably is 36 degrees where I am at the moment. Sweating away. Uh, supply voltage uh, stop means that it's not heating up just yet. Uh, working temperature there. Wor the working temperature varies. You can adjust it from 100 to 450. Its default set is 300. I usually like to go to about 350. Now at this stage we can adjust the working temperature by pushing the A and B button in steps of 50 degrees and then I will long press the A button. Changes to work and it's heating up. There we go, we're already at 350. See my tip smoking away there, I better make sure I don't touch it, otherwise I'm going to yelp and change the working temperature again while it's live like that. Now to turn it off you can long press the A button, see it's changed to stop there. Now to get into the menu, if we long press the B button, there we're into the first level of the menu. menu. Um, we have iron, oops it's backed out again idle OLED voltage calibration about. So let's and let's step through the menus, temperature compensation, buzzer, uh, temperature unit Celsius or Fahrenheit, working temperature 300 let's take that up to 350 that will then start up at 350 all the time, which is what I would like. And to back out, you push both at the same time. Now we can step through again, start heat on or off, so it starts heating as soon as you plug it in. And factory reset, temperature shield, temperature step. Uh, and we're out of that there, so so we have a sleep timer. Uh, if you it has an accelerometer built in, so if you don't use it, it'll drop back to the preset sort of idle temperature. That's what we're setting there. Let's have a look at that. Sleep time 180 seconds. Sleep temperature is 200 degrees, and idle time before it turns off. I guess sensitivity. Uh, and the OLED, we can set brightness and uh, direction, you can flip it over and key actions, back out of that, voltage, low voltage protection, which will uh, stop you from running your uh, LiPo down to zero, calibration, you can calibrate the temperature, If you want to actually measure the temperature and set it exactly, which you, seriously you don't really need to, and about will give us the firmware version. So there you go, it's very configurable. Let's just see if we've actually successfully set the working temperature. Plug it in. Yep, working temperature is 350. Long press B to get into the setup. Long press A to get it working. And stop again. So there we go, that's the secure SI-012 intelligent soldering iron. Very nice little unit, I think. Thanks for watching.